We're totally unmuted. We're going to go live right now. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Between the Rolls. It is Tuesday night. This is Murder Hobo, which means, you know, we talk about last week's shows, and then we talk about some topic of awesomeness, which we know totally nothing about, but we're really good at bullshitting our way into knowing that. Now, you'd think, by the way I started this, that I'm going to host the show tonight, and I am not. I just uh, am on a high adrenaline from killing a spider that was coming at me <laughs> this big, you know, and then the mama spider was this big and uh, Wait, thanks, pocket thanks. edition oh. monster Wait. manuals are the way to go. Let me hold on, like, hold on. Dense, did, you, heavy. did you just kill a mama spider and leave a bunch of orphans? <gasps> we can get into that later. <laughs> Wow. Right, you guys, you. follow us on Twitch, follow us on YouTube, take a look at our YouTube archive. What? Oh, wait, no, follow us on Twitch, <laughs> follow us on right. Twitter, take a look at our YouTube <laughs> archive. Uh, if you want to join the show sometime, either between the roles, because they really need to get me out of the seat. They're really tired of having me on here now. That's I mean, why I'm drinking two fist in tonight. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! This is just lemonade and sparkling water. Uh... <laughs> Then hit us up on Twitter <laughs> or at mhoboinc at gmail.com. You can also join in for a one-shot we have going this Saturday. Lots of people want a seat, but if you're brand spanking new, you always get first, first always. shot. At the Bibs! Uh, if you say, hey, can I play with that cool Kyle guy? Uh, probably not because they don't want me to be on the show any more than I have to be. Why? <laughs> Wait, wait, it's not like you're GMing and you're going to run the show over by two hours. I mean, hey, you, playing, you know what? It's not hey, so bad. Spoiler alert <laughs> in two weeks, oh. I think uh, Jason, aka Copious V Bitters, uh, is going to be one. running a game. So no. Calamity will be pushed back. So we uh -huh. will have two one shots in a row. Yeah. Uh, oh, you, his, you, his brother Frank is a lock on it. So. Buckle your pants, boys and girls, because those that, two that, together that is going to be a wild. Those two, yeah, yeah. You talk about go at each other. That's them. <laughs> Wait, does that mean now calamity will be on? Calamity the... will be on an off week. Oh okay. my god! So now we finally will have the two camp, the two campaigns running on two different weeks. Yep. I like that deal actually. <laughs> but then again, you got Cacophony, which is a campaign. So I guess you still have two campaigns in a week. Guys, okay. <laughs> I have been saying a bunch of stuff about this cool, awesome store we host where you can click on the button there and you can get some awesome Murder Hobo merchandise. I'm wearing mine. Uh, awesome Calamity merchandise. No awesome <laughs> cred. Uh, nothing, uh, because uh, the person who likes to do that... Uh, is dropping the like ball. A, no, the person starting her own Twitch channel. No, that has and nothing to do with it. No, it, it doesn't. No, hey, hey, really Kyle, does. don't forget there's new stuff in the store. New, oh, is new there stuff? stuff? Yes. Yeah, there's. Oh, there's, is it the con stuff? There's con. Yeah, there's, there's con, con stuff. stuff. By the way, hey, it's coming up. We're halfway there. We're gonna oh, have God. I'll sing it, Kyle. Hobo Con, the greatest con ever pulled. We're gonna murder Hobo Cancer <laughs> with the American Cancer Society. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, the merchandise. I don't know if any of that currently would would the merchandise for the con stuff go to the American Cancer Society. You, you take yeah, you're um, taking the profits from that and doing it too. So yeah. That's right. So you even if you don't want to go to the online con just buy stuff. because you don't have internet, just go over buy a shirt it looks awesome believe you me because i said so and i don't have any other evidence to prove otherwise and carol designed them carol i did the logo. yeah i did the look well i did the it's basically he took the logo and threw it in there and i did design the logo i redesigned it frank you gotta take credit for that too actually I schlocked shit together and then Carol you did, cleaned it I up. took I cleaned it up and improved it. <laughs> nice. So now we both, well, it was both. It was a team effort. Guys, mm. if you're cleaning up shit or you don't want to see the shit happening here, I can also tell you that we do have podcasts online. That's another link <laughs> down below, a tiny URL. You can find that later on if you're listening to us right now. Although if you're just listening to us right now, chances are you've already found the link and you don't need to click on it again. You're good to go. <laughs> awesome. 
Guys, we have wonderful sponsors tonight. We have Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, if you're rolling like shit, Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, I hear they got a dog recently, so the dog shit dice is now <laughs> going to become an actual thing. They are harvesting the poo they, from they a dog. They already had a Names dog, Eve. though. Oh, they had another dog? I, I don't oh, know. I believe they had a dog before. You want young the dog poop There's two. because oh. it's better for making dog shit dice. Sure. And finally, no if longer. your game stinks because <laughs> you're rolling natural 20s with your dog dice, go get some adventure sense. You can get it to smell like a tavern, an yeah. ancient library, or pew. Hey, look, Kyle. Oh, is that good? Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got no like, beef I with can mine. do that too. I could do that too if I didn't. Lock it away in several plastic baggies. <laughs> I've got the tavern one actually, so that was convenient. Welcoming tavern, and I nice. really like the smell of it. They also do other projects, such as the Shine Project, where if you are writing a story, you can buy the prompts and they can help answer questions that maybe you haven't thought of yet. I personally like using it for uh, game mastering, although they are coming out with another one specifically for that sometime in the future. We look forward to that. And finally, how to RPG with your cat. I don't know if they have a game coming up here soon, unless Murder Hobocon? Uh, we hope. We hope. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, yes, they're going to be there at Murder Hobocon, and then they have to be, because that's what sponsors do. <laughs> uh, finally. Signage. They'll be there in signage, if not in person. I they hope they're, they're in they're person. they're in person, you got to see them. If they watch the show, please come in person. I want to. I'd love to talk with you and beat you and for realsies. Although, I, oh, they're going to be at Gen Con. Them? What's the matter? With That's you? What, that, what the hell was that? Right? That's what I heard. <laughs> no, meet them, not That's beat not, them. No, I did not meet well, you. That is, no, uh, meet. It's the murder hobo in her. It just runs rampant. Oh, she's Jesus like new Christ. people. Let's beat them. You it know is what? She's from Boston, so she Boston. doesn't. No, talk well. it's meat, and and actually, I will get to meet them in person because they're going to be at Gen Con. She's about seventeen so. loggers in tonight, uh, so she does need help. What's wrong with seven minutes after? <laughs> you shoot the shit a little bit, and then our producer's yelling. <laughs> you know at us. what? I don't know what the second half of the show is going to entail. So it's I don't think it's going to be real I'm long. I'm good to go. I don't know if I'm going to have. Uh, uh, there's questions we'll guys see how this goes. finally we already mentioned it once i'll mention it again i said finally again so dj please count the finalies i finally say it <laughs> final, final dj's afterwards here game, so he won't be able to murder hobo con dot com <laughs> help us murder hobo cancer have a great time doing it the more people who show up the more interesting this thing gets otherwise i will have to bake cakes naked uh, in front of he the promised. screen blanket. Uh, that's because they paid enough money oh, that no. they didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so hurry up, raise as much money as you can. It is ten thousand dollars to see me not bake a cake. Oh my god! Uh, so I'd suggest but buying the gear. The gauntlet's been thrown. <laughs> you know, All it's right, real guys. easy. I'll just shut off my monitor, then I'd have to see you. Uh, luckily, I uh, am in contact with Russian hackers. They will turn the <laughs> monitors back on just to witness this. <coughs> That's why away. the price is at ten thousand dollars. I I spent all my life savings nine thousand dollars to pay them, and so one thousand dollars goes to cancer if you uh, pay ten thousand dollars not to see me or a stuff naked. Oh my god, we don't even have time to introduce ourselves now. That's right, so let's go around and introduce ourselves because Carol couldn't help but talk over everything <laughs> I said. Oh, I shit. thought it was rather rude and time-consuming, hmm. so hopefully she can keep this short. Carol, mini pater extraordinaire, cred campaigner, introduce yourself. Oh, why is my camera all blurry? Well, uh, hey, you know, I'll try it to fix too it. too many malt liquors, that's why. Apparently, my camera's decided to go out of focus, and it's not focusing. All right, well, whatever. Anyways, my name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter, and who just started her own mini painting stream on Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, and... Mondays I may change to seven. Six o'clock, I think, is too early. <laughs> I didn't have anybody on there until like seven o'clock. So, um, but anyway, sad this Saturday, I will definitely be having a stream. 
uh, and I'm painting this guy here. I'm going to try to fix my camera by having it focus on this. Well, there you go. The, the, we go. the aspect ratio is fine now. Boom. <laughs> Come on. Yes, it worked. Okay. <laughs> so that's what that's what I'm painting right a now. Tiny person helps this tiny person get into focus. Exactly. Yeah, it's it, <laughs> not that tiny. But anyways, yes, uh, that's what I'm painting on there anyways. And I should finish it up and start something new. So that's me. That's you. That's and me. then we go to David because hey. David rocks. He's in the corner. Go, David. Go. Hey, I'm David. And you can find me usually here on Between the Rolls. But if you want to join us, you may bump me off the show. So there's that. Anyway, uh, yes, I play Zadar on Cacophony and Ingve the Ravenkin on the calamity campaign which oh we got we got a story to tell you anyway i'm um, sure you do oh yeah since i was there and saw it <laughs> so so yeah that's me folks i'm david pleasure to meet you yay and finally the murder hobo conductor himself frank folks if you don't know who i am welcome aboard thanks for joining us everybody else you already know who i am uh, DMs, GMs, uh, seminars, and panelists, we are in the market for you. If you want to run something, good news. It only costs you five bucks for the badge. Then you can run all the shit that you want. Not kidding. The virtual world is the shit. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, Tiny yes. Preview, really tinyurl.com slash con preview. Kyle said it. Everybody else has said it. Murderhobocon.com. Go. Hit us up if you have any questions. Uh, if you want a better look at the venue, let us know. We will tour you and knock your socks off with it. Back to you, <laughs> Kyle. Hey, everybody. It's back to me, Kyle. <clears throat> I'm not going to introduce myself because we have a show to do, and I'm professional. Uh, speaking yeah, of which, we talk about last week's games first <clears throat> before we get into talking <clears throat> about this week. Uh, so, Thursday was the cred campaign cthulhu rises everybody dances um what? where <laughs> I'm the the logo. GM drove 10 hours from his vacation to make sure that his players could have a game and they didn't even show up what i yes, I, I would have dm'd them and with the roles <laughs> they had that would have been the on. end of the campaign <laughs> hold on i think only one person did not show up because she was not feeling well we oh i was only up. there in body i had no idea what was actually going on i actually <laughs> have to re-listen this is actually why i'm on the show going to have carol <laughs> talk about what happened oh you think so I, I don't remember? have to watch it you think I remember? I've got no brain left anyways. I actually do take some notes. What the hell happened there this session? I remember we were in those caves. You guys were in the caves. You had just killed the craw bears, and we were deciding what you were doing with those orphan bears because you're terrible people. I think we left them. I don't think we did anything with them. Actually, that's right. And no, you, Carol, they were decided left. their fate. I, uh, but anyway. Continue. What else? Are we, oh, yeah. I was going to say, what else were we going to do with them? I mean... Uh, no, we did find, I remember we found Jeremiah through a, uh, through eventually going enough paths and finding a carrion crawler. And he was in a really frightening, uh, horrible, disturbing, it was in a really bad place and in a bad way. I mean, it was a chamber that had little alcoves and there were, he had three friends with them, all dead, naked, I think, disemboweled. Yep. Just horrible. He was missing an arm. Disease. And several of his calf muscles. Yeah, 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 yeah. This lovely. The whole thing was horribly disturbing. But it was Cthulhu. What do you expect? <coughs> uh, so we we basically rescued him out of the cave. We had to fight the carrion crawler, but that was easy, actually, for a change. And... Uh, then we brought him back to the beach and we probably never should have stayed on the beaches. If I've not, I've, if DJ has, uh, let me hear how we made a big mistake on staying in the beach instead of trying to get to town. But I'm like, but he wasn't, but Jeremiah was basically a lump and, we, and I was hoping we'd treat him and be able to get him. So at least he could, you know, kind of propel himself. I don't know if he ever could. Or something, you know, or something. But we were like, 
I don't know how far town away is either. So, I mean, you know, it would have been a crapshoot. But no, we <laughs> stayed on the beach even after we knew there were deep ones that were. Mm -hmm, there were deep ones that were lurking. I Sometimes went to go I get. Be like deep ones are watching, watching me. me. Yeah, because I went to go get water and I spotted those fuckers. I spotted what, like two or four of them at the time, and then uh, I did tell the others they were there. But it's funny they were watching me. Just why I'm the, I was a little hesitant in the next part, but they didn't attack or anything, which I thought was weird. But they clearly saw me. So, anyways, it was the middle of the night. I had to go get more water and. And I believe I took O'Reilly with me and there were now like six of them and a couple of them were bigger ones. And then they saw us again and came and attacked us. That was fun. That was interesting because that battle, instead of being your standard, you must go and murder them. That battle was, you need to survive seven rounds and then help is gonna come. And I thought that's that's a very interesting and different way to do it. And I don't see it done that often, but I think it's a it's a cool way to do it. It really ramps up the drama. It makes it very scary. So and most, where we, someone almost didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Pretty, yeah, I went down. <laughs> Not you, Caitlin. Yeah, you. <laughs> Cleo. Caitlin, Cleo. Well, Cleo went down. That's right. No, she I was, went no, down I, and then she got a direct attack while she was down bleeding. On the yeah, ground. and I thought you killed her, but I've forgotten she made a save. So the direct attack only took two away saves. two. Yeah. Actually, but I remember I got close. I got really close and she, I think, restored a few hit points in me or something. Yeah, she, if I recall helped correctly. Helped you. She went down. Oh, she, no, she, no, I actually, no, I ended up somehow I actually managed to not go down. Come to as, think of as, it. As a viewer, I noticed that you were starting to go down. She ran over and yeah. healed you. She no, went she did. down and you said, fuck her. Fuck her. We're fighting. <laughs> that much. is how I remember it. That's no, right. That's no, how no, no, I no. remember it too. Actually, hold on. No, she didn't heal me. She did, um, she, ah, what the hell was the spell? It was the fire Let's spell. Go to the tape, Larry. <laughs> no, no, it was. It was the fire spell. No, I didn't actually get any healing. Come on, look say, at my screen. Yeah, he's What spell it. did she do? Uh, Burning hands. Burning hands, there yeah. You go. There yeah, you go. so that's, yeah, she did that. She didn't heal me. And I was like, no, I didn't say fuck her. <laughs> Maybe I did one point because I didn't get any friggin' healing. And I'm like a, <laughs> under five hit points somewhere in there. I will I will tell you this down. now and the watchers now. Uh, we have uh, there is a little homebrew about magic food and that you know you don't want to eat a lot of magic food or bad things happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you heal Cleo? Oh yeah, oh, but I had to I had to six. <laughs> oh, right sure. in. Yeah, but I mean it's not like it's that that was more like we have like to talk to Cleo sustenance. and what this means for her character. She didn't now. shove them in. She baby bird them. She... <laughs> no, no, no. I sh no, basically, I just cast and shoved them in. I mean, I had to. She was she was at minus two death saves. Okay, so I had to do something. And as you said, it's it's. I know. I understand. They also supposed to you know feed you for a day, but. And we also have eaten food food before that. So I don't know if that actually counteracts it because we did have dinner. That wasn't like her only sustenance of the day. So I don't think it should count. I want to be nice. She wasn't there. So uh, uh, yeah, she no. only gets half the damage. Anyway. Uh, huh? <laughs> she had food. She had real food. And to me, if you don't have real food and are just subsisting off of it, Okay, you have a point, but we we actually had food. So uh, you were almost slaughtered when eight uh, people mysteriously. I men knew, and women. I knew it was more than one. Somehow, Brand DJ thinks there was only one person. I'm like, no, there was more than oh, one. Oh yeah, showed no, up. no, 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 no. Oh, I uh, let him Only know. <laughs> one of them actually came out from came the out and talked, yeah, and, and uh, uh, threatened uh, Riley with the point of a sword. Asking if you were the mutinous crew from Captain Kenza's ship. We and did not have time to answer. Because we ran over for 25 minutes, okay? Yeah, it, it was, was my fine. Fault. I'm sorry. My fault. But that leads us into the calamity of 
the calamity? next situation, which it is was the calamity. Oh my on god! On Saturday. Oh my god! Oh, tell us so much about it, David. Well, first of all, a brief musical interlude. Jesse is a friend. This is for you, Jesse. <laughs> I know he's been a good friend of mine, <laughs> but lately something's changed. It ain't hard to define. Azari's little sister is a ghoul, and yeah, we haven't got the time. Anyway, <laughs> Jesse's ghoul. Jesse's ghoul. What's the name of uh, the episode? Springfield's gonna sue us. It's the best name of an episode ever, by the way. Oh, Look, you guys man. are such it. a small fan, but you sang Jesse's ghoul terribly so we have to sue you yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> oh my god uh yes the episode jesse's ghoul well previous episode we had made our way to this magnificent stone structure and uh yeah could not discern what it is what it was we made our way through shamblers uh azari was the first to breach the structure and look in and lo and behold find his sister floating three feet in the air eyes opaque and ablaze so yeah so we pick up from there we split the party right away yeah less than five minutes in and we split the party way to go guys oh yeah and that worked out great so split the party all right, Azari and Ingve uh, make their way into the the structure with all these rectangle things filed in these wooden things or whatever that could be, I don't know, shelves. Uh, yes, turned out to be a very, very, very massive library, and I'm just going to leave it at that. So. Uh, as we approach and try to stock up on Jesse's sister, well, Zari's sister, uh, the other two shitheads were trying to find <laughs> an entrance around that. Uh, valued party members. Valued party <laughs> members. That's it. <laughs> so anyway, Dave and Rick here uh make their way around back they're trying to figure out the whole concept of glass doors and getting through <laughs> so <laughs> the whole concept of windows is uh yeah generally unknown to us because we're from the bronze age folks <laughs> so <laughs> but um uh, yes so as both parties are breaching the the library uh we approach Jesse's, what, I keep calling it Jesse's, man. Jesse's girl. Uh, Jesse's ghoul. Anyway, Ingve and Azari come up with the plan that Azari is going to make a rush and he's going to tackle his sister. And yeah, the, the fun ensued from there. So yeah, we come to find out that she is actually possessed. Uh, Azari ends up choking her out. Uh, for this this specter to appear and uh yeah rakir does a little reconnaissance around the room uh yeah discerns that these gems are are fueling whatever the specter's uh power and decides he's gonna save us all by ninja ninja challenging up to the top and grabbing those spheres so they were like orbs or something like that anyway so the hilarity ensued on that. We had Ghostbusters movement uh, moment with, uh, yeah, the, the ghost in the library is pretty much what we had. And it was pretty much like, get her, Ray! Because, yeah, that worked out really bad for us. So anyway, in Rakir's mind, he saved us all and uh, decided to burn the shit down, Pookie. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we end up burning the place down. So, yeah, destroyed. About Dest time, man. About time something got burnt down on that show. Heroes, folks. Yes, we are heroes. Poor Peck Peck. Uh, yeah, pulled to Kevin Bacon was trampled by the crowd. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man, he was completely useless. So, but the episode ends. We rescue her sister. The Spectre no longer uh apparent it's probably 
gone off somewhere because I don't think we destroyed it. So, but anyway, we'll find that out, that out in later episodes. Now we just have to figure out what are we going to do? Are we going to trudge our way home? Because apparently we just, des- we destroyed a source that could have uh, expedited our way home. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll pick it up from there uh, next episode, but should be interesting folks. Yeah. The guys are awesome. Rob, Scott, Jesse. Oh my God. It was Chris so Parker. much fun. Yeah. That's the talent of murder hobo. <laughs> Those guys are. We got the (laughs) Q team on (laughs) Tread. But it's awesome. Check it out. It's in our archives. It's truly a funny episode. So, and that's it. And that's Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna have to go and watch that one actually because it was fun. It was was funny. It was. It was very good. Kyle, do you remember the Fifth Element? Yeah. Uh, Chris Tucker's character. That was Uh Peck Peck. The whole oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> he, took, he took one look at the floating sister and ah! <laughs> hit the high notes and out the door he went. Yeah. The bravery was essential. Uh, 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 all right. So I don't know that one. So I was saying like Benny on the uh, the mummy movies. Yeah. Money movie. Okay. Yeah. He uh, was saying. Uh, so like... He got punched in the nuts because Chris oh, Tucker. Yeah. Hits that's true, oh, yeah. He is, he's, yeah, that's he's true. amazing. He's amazing in that movie. So, all anyway. right. And then, did we have a Sunday Frank game? We did not have a Sunday Frank game. Oh my gosh, we're missing out on the Sunday Frank games, but that is okay because I'm sure it'll come together here soon enough. <coughs> but that leads us talking about this week real fast. We got Thursday cacophony, Saturday. If you want it on one of the one shots, it gets crazy. It gets kooky. You need a break from DMing DMs. Take it. And Hit it's us a dungeon. Up at it's M- a dungeon Herber. crawl. Ooh, yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> so only the really talented players can make the whole one shot go askew, and that's a challenge. Can you do it? Can you rise to the challenge? Dungeon crawl. But that leads us. <laughs> Well, it doesn't lead us to the next topic because I didn't come up with an impressive segue. Uh, I would have had to make a devil of a deal in order to do that and come up with oh, You were on the whole oh, oh, dilemma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and guys, we are talking, uh, continuing talking about races. We are hitting the odd ones here in the player's handbooks, tieflings and dragonborns. But I'm going to hand the reins over to Carol. Carol, there you go. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. So, all right. So, tiefling and dragon. So stupid. I know. I. <laughs> oh my I'm god. I'm so sorry. I know. Good lord. What the hell is wrong with us? Day uh, already long. Yeah. Day was long already, like you know, six hours ago. <laughs> from my case. Oh, All man. right, Dragon Ball. Morning drink. You know, <laughs> I really am kind of sad that was that you didn't just yeah put all the uh, extra planar characters together. That's next week. But you went yeah. for well, Tiefling are extra planar. I don't they're care. Inferno, so they they're the anti. We we, we have you know what what, we what have each cheap of those. players. They get the players' handbook and nothing else. They only know about Tieflings. They and only know about that. Well, That's, we have one Tiefling well, yeah, and one because, Dragonborn, and then next week, well, we've got an Asimar, but... Okay. That's well, right, the Asimar is in another... We've got Tieflings. There are how many sub-races now? Like 18 of them? Are mm-hmm. there? Dragonborn, oh, yeah. and it's whatever color dragon you want. Mm-hmm. And there's two new subclasses that like have been added are... through Unearthed Arcana, so we can talk about those tonight, too. So, oh, Lord. Yeah. All right. Well, all sorts of things to talk about. Not that I'll actually remember because I'm brain dead at this moment. Uh, you know, it says, so the first part is origins of lore and, and pop culture. And this, yeah, not my, right. I can't really think of much, but I'll go around the horn and you guys can give your insights on where did these come from? Who, where, where did they, if anyone actually knows the history of how they get into this game that'd be cool because i really don't this reason why i'm hosting this section folks because i don't know a lot about these races i do play one in another 
game system, but uh, not D and D. And I don't actually know when. I want to. I don't remember when they actually came into uh, being fourth ed. Oh. Maybe I should know. All right, but anyways, uh, Frank. Actually, I'll start with you. What do you know about the history of of either of these two races? Uh, I don't read the books, Carol. I think we're uh, we're all pretty positive. That's just that the time. rules. You <laughs> it's like no, no. It's just the rules that you don't read. I thought you read up on the lore. I am the rules, Carol. I you am are Judge, Judge mm -hmm. Frank. Uh, actually, uh, you know, coming from the elder group, uh, Tea Queens <laughs> and Dragonborn. The Dragonborn clearly came from the Dragonland series. I, I don't think there's any question. Okay. At least in my mind, I think the Dragonborn, you know, everybody, anybody who likes Dragonlance is like, oh, I want to play one of those. Well, you don't turn to stone when you die, so that's bullshit. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as for the tieflings, I, I think it was the need for, well, you know, I you know, I just want something different. Be a fucking human fighter and shut up. Show me how good you are with something mundane, okay? You can be a fantastical creature, uh, but my guess is it probably came from those who, A, maybe wanted to play the bad guy, and B, oh, I want to play a demon. So they said, hey, you can play a tiefling, I, I guess. Oh, well, I mean, uh, tiefling don't really have to be bad guys in the sense that Asim are, yeah, it's unfortunately, this is the way, are not good guys. It just, it relates. Um, Tifa, are it they just, all good guys? No. <laughs> I know for a fact. <laughs> no. Well, no. And um, the thing of it is, all it is is it means that in your bloodline, you have infernal blood or you have celestial blood. So whether or not you're good or bad, that's more about your upbringing and such rather than what's in your bloodline. So let's have my opinion. Uh, Kyle, how about you? Any insight? And, and if you, and if any of you guys could think of any pop culture references other than Frank brought up in the actual notes, Hellboy. Which uh, is how true. about horns with uh, Daniel Radcliffe mm -hmm. where, uh, yeah, he starts growing out horns and starts looking devilish. Mm -hmm. uh, and, which is always how Potter I prefer series. my... Huh? I don't remember that in the Potter series. <laughs> <laughs> you should have paid attention, you know? Uh, she threw in some more things along with Dumbledore's gay and all that other stuff. And by the way, oh, Harry is a dra uh, tiefling. Uh, I can tell you a little bit more about Dragonborn, which started out in third edition, if I remember correctly. That may uh, be right, and they are, uh, oh gosh, back with Tiamat and Bahamut. Bahamut? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. Good. You got I'm right. I'm good. Because I get that mixed up with the Minotaur devil guy. And that's always an issue because I love Minotaurs. <laughs> Dragons are okay. Uh, Tiamat started creating uh, a servitor race for herself, half dragons, which those who have played the first adventure for fifth editions which is called the Horde of Tiamat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Two book series. You do find half dragons and dragonborns are also going on there. Uh, Bahamut was not willing to sink so low, uh, but he needed a servitor race as well. So he took volunteers from other races and sent them through the rite of dragonhood. And those uh, evolved into the dragonborn. Um, then they showed up in Faerun and some crazy thing that happened. I don't entirely understand that, but now they have their own nation in <laughs> other worlds. Um, uh, really dragonborn are also tied into evil too. Uh, mm -hmm. Either as an answering to evil half dragons being made or because a sorcerer God who was loving dragons was like, I want to serve it a race and we're going to make them half dragons too. And dragonborn, that's how you get them. Um, after that, they just evolved into dragon hatching, egg laying fun things. Tieflings, uh, yeah, you mentioned that. That's families who made deals with devils or mm -hmm. demons. Um, or the byproducts of, uh, yeah, encounters with, with, yeah. with cambians and, succub and succubi. So offspring from those. So Cambians, aren't they uh, already half 
and half as well, or am I mixing mm-hmm. that up as well? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, they're they're a little tainted with the devil blood, um, and that's pretty much as much lore as I know from uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons itself. Um, yeah, you can call on someone else now. <laughs> <laughs> So I no, that was very good. By the way, that's that's more than I know. I said I could not for life and remember when <laughs> they all came in. I remember it was not this. It was not five E that they were around before that. I just couldn't remember. It was that when. three. It was right. Three point five. Let's let the players play whatever races they want, <laughs> and I they s- did. I don't think they said. I don't think all of the races got in there, but there was that was the beginning of it though. All right, David, how about you? And if said so, if you can figure out any other any that come in pop culture, mm-hmm. that'd be cool. Because I, I do feel like you guys are better at coming up with these than Frank and I are. So Well, there's a batch of tieflings that everybody knows oh. from recent pop culture. So at least three of them. So which which thing? And I feel like I should Critical Role, Ruby of the Sea, Jester, and oh, yeah. Holly Mock. <laughs> there you go. What's critical role? I, I keep debating yeah, what not they're cons- I keep debating or not if the- yeah, I know they're popular, but I don't know mm-hmm. if they're quite pop culture like and half dragons. Or, you know, or, I mean, mean yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, you could also say, hey, I, I play one on a podcast, but so hey, that must be. No, I'm just kidding. Are there <laughs> any others? It said there's no real others, is there? And no, like- no, these are are fairly. Um, you know, uh, I mean, as far as pop culture, the, there's, you know, there's uh, the demons from the, um, you know, Atrigan from the comic books and that's stuff. That's true. Like, actually, Atrigan, like Atrigan actually is a good, like I said, there are infernals actually that pop up, mm-hmm. no true tieflings. Oh yeah. But there definitely are infernals and devils and such that pop up throughout history and pop you could culture. Have- well, Etrigan, maybe. Would you mm-hmm. call him a tiefling? I mean, or I mean, uh, I mean sort of, kind of. Actually, yeah. the cl- something that is actually close to that would be uh, what the hell's his name? Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. He oh, is, Nightcrawler he is the best example. Human. There you go. That's it. Yeah, he he is actually the best. he may not have the horns, but he is essentially he is essentially a tiefling. Pretty much, that's how tieflings came around in Five E. People wanted to play Nightcrawler, and that's Who how wouldn't? they got it. Nightcrawler's <laughs> awesome. I love. I love that's the reason why tieflings are are in Dungeons and Dragons. People wanted to be Nightcrawler. Oh my so. God! Who wouldn't want to be him? He's so. I've awesome. I've created a character named Fal and yeah he is a monk a uh, rogue and he is nightcrawler he can bamf so he can teleport mm-hmm. that's oh, so yeah. cool throw a feet yep so uh yeah uh tieflings again like uh you said there 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 were usually faustian deals or uh encounters with um any of any ser- servant or servitor race of the pit lords whatever ha- ha- taints a family's bu- bloodline. And I mean, it's not guaranteed that each offspring within that family's bloodline will become a tiefling. Strong ties uh, to to infernal legacy. Yes, they're all going to be tieflings. Uh, others might be a surprise that pops up every once in a while. And yeah, so, but um yeah, uh, the the thing to note about the the tieflings though is the t- the type of tieflings that that they are uh, de- depends on the 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 demon uh, the pit lords that have uh, influenced uh, that that bloodline. You have um, you have tieflings that are Mistopheles. You have you know it just any. You know, Orcus. Uh, just it's mm. yeah. So I think the, Orcus is a full. Isn't he a full-blooded demon though, or mm-hmm. devil? He is. He is. Yeah. So he's not so, tieflings to me. You got to have that human component. But the the thing is, is that tieflings within their sub races, and that's what they are. The ones that that represent these different pit lords. They get gifts, certain racial gifts. You know, which are racial abilities based on the fiend or pit lord that influenced their line. So, 
uh, and that's pretty much what's created the, the Tiefling sub races. Now, some of the things for flair and stuff like that, Tiefling families usually take the, their last names from a virtue or a vice, mostly vices. So, yeah. So, you know, it, it's great. Uh, you know, I play in a home campaign. We we have a we have a tiefling family, the Malshimbers. They're they're in Waterdeep, and yeah, it's just hilarity. You know, of course, tieflings char um, charisma is one of their higher um, traits, and usually tieflings make excellent excellent bards. So you can't beat it. You know. So uh, warlocks, sorcerers, yep. so definitely charismatic classes. So, but yeah, I, I dig the tiefling race. Um, I've created a couple and uh, yeah, it, I really look forward to playing them. So. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy mine. It's, a, it's not this system, but still tieflings. tieflings are what pretty system specific. is it? Actually, it's not the one you were going to think. It. I was going. Uh, Which one, Carol? Come on, Carol. <laughs> so one begins with an S. Pathfinder? No. No. It's the other one. Storefinder? No. You know, like the Storefinder? Yeah, it's Storefinder. <laughs> That's, that's the, uh, we know I, which one you're talking about. And you about, know what? Though. But the funny thing is, I didn't make her a like uh, charisma class. I made her a soldier. Oh She's man! Huge and beefy, and, and fire laser fun. pistols everywhere. Yeah, no, well, well, she fights. She actually melee. Well, we are a no fires. We we are a tabletop thing, so we can be in yeah, we inclusive can. with other yeah. systems. You guys don't make you don't fun have of me. To be the gatekeeper, Carol. You know, you know yeah. what? You guys systems. are the worst because you always call me out for saying that p word or why well, haven't I? I'll say star. Yeah, right she now. said p. No. <laughs> um, no, the thing about I, what I think the, the the prospect of tieflings <laughs> in outer space is awesome because I think of a movie from the eighties, Galaxy but, of Terror, man. So, oh, yeah. was there a tiefling? Was there a tiefling in that? No, but there's devils and stuff like oh, that in that's it. So, close yeah. enough. Oh, close yeah. enough. I mean. Yeah, and it, it, she is. She, I put her character. My character's name is Tally. Uh, she's. I'm on a podcast, so you can actually hear the games that she's in, and she is so much fun to play. Oh yeah, she is chaotic. She's. She is chaos. So, but we we have our resident tiefling, you know, the 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 empress of chaos within yep. in the murder hobos who Caitlin. didn't show up tonight. I yeah, it's great. <laughs> she is chaos walking. It'll be anyway. there Thursday, or she will fucking die. <laughs> Why? Why are you gonna? Wow! Wow! What did she do to? Nothing. Well, I'll, I'll, I, I will roll for her. Yeah, that's yeah. that. That it's not malicious. It's just. Oh, Frank she's will be just rolling. gonna die <laughs> if she's so, in here. Uh, she's got no, but two Kate, out of the last three episodes. Caitlin's got a fixation with tieflings. She loves playing tieflings. So, uh, as a matter of fact, the first time I ever met Caitlin, the first episode that I was with, she was with her. She was playing a tiefling. Kyle remembers tiefling what? setting fire to poor farmers. Poor farmers. <laughs> yeah. don't, Which don't. I mean, um, maybe we segue this over into stereotypes a little bit because you know. Yeah, I, well, well, are you wait? Are you hosting this? Are, hmm? hey, yeah. No, what? I want to get you moving along, Carol. Well, I don't. Hey, no, so dragonborn, you know, We're you kind of you. have your lawful traditional society. Uh -huh. You know, you might have egg caretakers and all that and the ruler is very regal and then you have these tieflings who are like caitlin herself incredibly chaotic uh beings just set loose onto the material realm um are there any other stereotypes you guys know of as far as these races or why don't you answer the question since them? you're actually on the panel and i'm not I'm well, the, not the, answering. The, I don't. I don't have answers for this. You have, have a tiefling character. I've never played a tiefling actually. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. Nah, not but in this system. One of the you things mean, is yeah. that they're charismatic races with the dragonborn. They are also. I mean, they're strength and and charisma. So one of the things that they get portrayed like 
a lot is, like you said, servitors of Bahamut or any of the other, uh, you know, dragon uh, deities. And, um, you know, they, the, they're always known as the paladins, you know, the really powerful paladins with dragonborn. So, so, you know, I mean, that's not a, un, that's not a bad stereotype, but you know, the noble is kind of like the, the term that comes to mind when you talk about a dragonborn. So usually, unless you're talking about uh, Arcan, oh God, Joe Meganillo's character, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Oh my God. He totally played against the green when he created that character. I'm going to go to Frank for the next one. Go. Uh, what are your, what? So yeah, I what, so said, yeah, I have a character, but I don't play, we don't play with any stereotypes. It's the future and a lot of them are gone. So we don't, we don't lean into that. I honestly really don't know what their stereotypes are. So Frank, what are some of their stereotypes? Or, or either. Oh, either, either, uh, either, either or either. both. Uh, I've Let's call the whole thing off. See, yeah. I've never played either one of them, so I, I don't understand why you would play them. I I have a very definitive opinion on 5e and this constant greed to kiss the ass of players. And these, <laughs> these two things are a primal example uh, of my Oops. great disdain for five e. Oh, good lord! You know <laughs> uh, what? They're just a class. Why would you three e three point five e? I think race. Race. more player ass. Why than would any you play? Ever. No, but seriously, why would you play anything other than human? You know that you could ask that question, and there have been other races since oh, I love day dwarves. one. Why yeah. would you do? See, but that's my point. Why? You know, th there are other races, and always have been. And to me, this is no different. They're, they're, as long as they're I not am a player broken. who enjoys having a challenge. Yeah. Uh, what I see as Dragonborn and Tiefling is they have innate abilities that stack the deck in their favor. I mean, mm -hmm. if I'm a black dragon, I can always use my breath weapon and still use martial weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm a human or a dwarf, I have an either or, so I like stacking the deck against me. These two class, these two races, especially, take their abilities and give it what I consider an unfair advantage. Uh, to <laughs> other races, hold on, hold on, I mean, why, why would you play a human if oh, I can I can spit acid? Because mm -hmm. I get a feat at first level playing a very human that they don't, and I can customize it more. That's why I play human. Min Maxer. Dragon Min Sworn Maxer. are actually fairly weak uh, race to play in because they're yeah, you it's... get that one resistance, you get that one breath weapon, but that breath weapon sucks. The Once you get UA, past third level. The UA, yeah. the new Do URA correct has corrected that. <laughs> so they, they, because they're a pretty strong race now. I was going to say, if you notice that in some of the things where they have like a bonus attack like that, like you get damp piercing that can bite too, that it's not, it, it, yeah, on the surface it looks pretty, but when you actually start getting down to it, it, it. it's really just better to attack with a weapon. Mm -hmm. It's considerably weaker than, it's almost like having a cantrip. It's considerably weaker than a full attack. Yeah, but, that's what I found about it. But they beefed it up quite a bit with. But uh, you the it, new you ruined UA. the question, though, Frank. The question was what stereotypes. Well, here uh, and let's you made do a this. list. You Frank, made a list. You're a really DM. Cool. If your players choose to play a tiefling or a dragonborn, do your NPCs react to them of like, "Oh shit, you made a deal with the devil"? Fucking of stay course. away from me. <laughs> I'll what get the cleric on you. Uh, you know, I uh, I go ahead and view it as I do not do that enough, uh, especially I was about to say that. because I, I think if you're going to have this many races, A, there's always going to be inherent racism, but B, there's also going to be inherent tolerance to them. Mm. Uh, and if the people are, these puny humans are scared of this, fire toting tiefling with fucking horns that can gore them they are likely not going to screw with them except for the tavern brawlers so i i think when you bring in the outside races bugbears goblins whatever 
uh, there is going to be a certain amount of distrust. And there mm -hmm. is, and I can't even, it was, you guys, some of you guys played in it where it was a town by the river and you had to go in and Jesse's character was the Minotaur. Oh yeah, gunslinger. yeah. That was us. That was Wait, me. Wait, don't we don't we have to actually pick that game back up? Yeah, so <laughs> we finish. should. So in we that one, that. I, I went ahead and did the racism. Mm -hmm. on, and I, and yeah, I think that it was worked well. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, I I mean I'm not a racist. I I don't give a shit yeah. about human beings in general. So when I when I DM the game, I usually just go ahead and do a laissez faire attitude about it. Now, I, I really should, as part of my weaker aspect, play that up more and say, oh, my God, I, you know, fuck these elves. I hate elves because, uh, you know, I like playing dwarves. Uh, but I don't do that, and I consider that a failing. So when you say, you know, what's their stereotype, to me, they're just overbearing adventurers. So I, I really cannot give a, a valid answer. I, I'm in the same camp as you carol yeah i i don't it's just I don't hard. use them so i just don't give a shit about them i i look more to target their weaknesses as opposed to their strengths and and for the record i think that actually makes you a pretty good person if you have a hard time pulling the racism card and and playing that that kiss the dm's I, ass there hey. you go. wow <laughs> he's not wait wow. a minute wait wait the only dm it's he's the wrong dm Yes, yeah, I was gonna say, up. what are you talking about? The Make DM, Carol I've been kissing Carol's ass. <laughs> now, now, if he ever, if he ever does, is promised and run some one shots with the old campaign members in it. Okay, then maybe I'll start kissing his ass then. But until then, I'm not worried about him. I mean, he has, it's, he's not running me in anything other than maybe one shots, mm -hmm. maybe, and I might maybe. never ever see one of those again. Uh, the way things are going, which is a good thing. All uh, right, Kyle, how about you? Uh, any any stereotypical traits that you can want to throw out in the table? Stereotypical traits. Um, I, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is a new one that I'm coming across, um, which tieflings only. I don't have much for Dragonborn because Dragonborns, they tend to be on that side of where it's like, all right, I want to side with Tiamat or I'm going to side with... Bahamut, be noble, yeah. good, uh, research, ancient, noble. Yeah, noble is being the word, or mm -hmm. be after Tiamat, like hey, Archon. I got uh, a question. I got a question on that. Um, let me your can I finish my sorry, recent sorry, stereotype sorry. that I found. Okay, so with tieflings, the new stereotype I'm finding is that people want to flip the stereotype that's already there. At this point, it's becoming so often that I'm seeing it. Um, that it is uh, in itself now become a stereotype where tieflings are uh, revered and honored citizens of any village because they sacrifice themselves in order to protect the entire village uh, from evil demonic beings. They end up taking that into their bloodline, which transforms them into tieflings. Um which then, of course, then evolves into people have forgotten that you're supposed to honor these tieflings, and now we keep kick them and treat them <clears> like dirt. Um, <throat> but that's one of those flip stereotypes that has now mm -hmm. become a bit of a stereotype because no one does want to do anything terrible to their players uh, involving racism these days, and uh, understandably so, but perhaps not quite realistic um or i mean as a job for the dms you are supposed to prevent present challenges and obstacles and some of that can be based on a player's race so being mindful of that and that to add some realism you do add just a bit of that in there but all in support of obstacles and challenges um for storytelling um but that is one of the other stereotypes i've recently come across carol you had a question well now it's not as relevant as it was a bit ago i was going to ask about colors of the dragons but yes as it's that. as certain color uh, certain colors indicative of bahamut and certain colors indicative of tiamat like is bahamut the good 
you know, the, uh, the metallic, the metallic dragons. ones. Yes. So, and, okay. then, and then, so yeah, so the probably... idea is that the blend of humanity into the dragons has <laughs> lessened, uh, the effect of chromatics are all bad. Metallics are all good. And so that's the reasoning behind you can play in good lawful, good, Red Dragonborn. Are you enjoying yourself over there, Frank? What is he I, I doing? I'm just trying to determine uh, if Metallica is the good one, then is Pink Floyd the bad one. <laughs> yeah. That's correct. You got it. Why is pink? Pink is not a color of a dragon, though. No, he's making a... Never mind, Carol. <laughs> I will say... And I know I like those Brutus groups. Where I'm going to support Tasha's because I don't like Tasha's for anything else. With the new... Um, uh, do whatever the hell you want with your race, you can now be like, oh yeah, well, I'm a gem dragonborn, and I think a What's gem dragonborn coming? should have this. You can bring back uh, yellow chromatic dragons, which are the fastest dragons, and you can be like, all right, well, he's great at dex and charisma. Uh, and that is one thing I'm going to say Tasha has, and because there's such a huge lore on dragons in general, being able to take that and pile it into your character is cool, and Tasha's does make that a lot easier. As someone who's been reading up on all the dragons for our Council of Warring games in the future. Uh, yeah, it's fascinating stuff. It is, actually. It really is. So You won't stop, and that's nope. the issue. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, it is about that time. And oh, come on. We can make this longer, Carol. No, no. Yeah. As long yeah, as not... we don't go over 25 minutes, we're good. <laughs> no, I think I'm going to call it that because it said we didn't, you know, the really weren't stereotypes you guys presented that you would be breaking, that we'd have to discuss breaking stereotypes and such. Uh, I don't think that's. Well, I, I think it's. I, I think basically if you go there with... aren't any. <sighs> aren't okay. Any. If you take the noble stereotype for dragonborns, uh, I mean, the stereotype for dragonborn is to kind of match the color personality with the dragonborn in question, which can then just screw over that whole noble dragonborn. You can have the black dragonborn thief uh, who is not noble. He just is greedy. He takes the dragon in nature into it a little bit more man that is hard to get rid of stereotypes because you're like but okay you know, i'm gonna change and flip this stereotype and now i'm a black sneaky dragonborn or now i'm that good tiefling who accepted evil to save everyone else and is completely mistreated go go for black, it. Uh, black sheep of the family you know you're a silver dragon but guess what uh fuck these guys i'm in it for myself that way, when you walk in and you're the silver dragon, oh, he's really good. You know what? I could really use some money. <laughs> yeah, right. I have to. I have to tell a little story about what I did uh, to what in one of my games with the dragonborn and all that. They came in contact with an artifact. They were a metallic dragon, and because of that artifact, they got corrupted, and then they became a black dragon. <laughs> so it was just like, what are you doing? And it's just like, well, you put the talisman on, you look in the mirror, and your appearance has changed. So, <laughs> all right, now I am calling because we got two minutes left. So, uh, final thoughts, or yeah, but I'll give you all a final thought. Uh, Kyle, final thoughts for me Tieflings, Dragonborn, they're fun to play, hmm? though I never play them, but they are fun to play. And <laughs> UA is going to help with the power creep for Dragonborn, so pay attention to that. Hopefully they'll put it in a future book. Um, break the stereotype, guys. It's really hard to do, but I think it's going to be entirely worth it if you can figure it out, because it's really hard. All right, David. And DMs, use the stereotypes. Yeah. yeah I like weaning. <laughs> Dean Devious. 
Well, sometimes as a DM, just don't Damn give it. your your players uh, a chance to live up to a stereotype of a particular one. So, I mean, you you're the puppet master. You can flip the switch in so many ways on some of them, like I did with the dragon board. You know, started off chromatic, and then, I mean, start off metallic, and then become chromatic. So, you know, but. Uh, if you want to try them, try them. Uh, Dragonborns uh, with the new UA, they're they're great. They were great before, but even more so now. Uh, tieflings, who doesn't love a tiefling? So I mean, come on. So oh, shut up, Kyle. Uh, because of Caitlin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it. All right. Okay. Point taken. <laughs> so love you, but- Caitlin. We do, Caitlin. We love you. You're you're our chaos, our chaos Come queen. Back. You're our chaos queen. Anyway, so yes, so uh, yeah, play those races. Uh, flip the switch on any stereotypes or you know known alignments, and yeah, just have fun. You know that that's the whole point of five A is to do what you want and have fun. But so it's the whole point of the game. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Frank, uh, flip the script. Don't flip the script. It's your character. Play them how you want them. If you yep. want to throw Amen. a weird trade in them, do it. Uh, if you want to totally space out and never use a breath weapon as a dragonborn, do it. Uh, make it rot your teeth. Maybe make yourself a toothless uh, dragonborn <laughs> because you use too much acid. Most importantly, murderhobocon.com. DMGM submissions available we got starfinder we got cyberpunk we got D. we're gonna have pathfinder uh you got a game you want to run fucking come on over come on uh, over do it uh murderhobocon.com all the links you need are there check it out carol oh, so if you forgot you forgot a couple if you want to be a vendor or a sponsor or if you're all the links are there (laughs) yeah but but we are accepting we are accepting uh people for that too i'm gatekeeping Uh, fuck those people (laughs) (laughs) he's the goalie he's kicking them out (laughs) no 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 we want vendors and and artists and such we do we do we we definitely want you i mean yeah we want you there that's half the point that's half the fun of a con is to go and see all the vendors Exactly. And spend all your point is you're supposed to leave all your money in the vending room. Two yeah. hey, two bands, one comedian, yeah. a fortune telling booth, a photo booth, audio, video. We have it all. It oh, is yeah. no shit like a real convention. Only you don't have to wear pants. Just keep the camera right. up. Sure, there might be porn there. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I uh, have that, that badge might- will cost you ten bucks. <laughs> there might be a mini painting smackdown too i guess that i'm supposed to help plan uh all right so with that follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take check out those youtube archives of all our old episodes uh mm. buy our awesome stuff in our shop if buy you want to chat about dd life or universe and anything there's our discord uh, of course if you want to hear our voices and not see our faces there's our podcast and of course, you talked about the con. Is there any, is that all? Everything there that? Oh yeah, well yes, our sponsors. Of course, our sponsors. We have Odd Fish Games, makers of that awesome Adventure Sense, and of course, Pirate Dog Dice, makers of awesome handcrafted and custom dice. And as I said, I'm doing my final bit. As a, I realized I didn't actually give out my Twitch channel, which would be helpful. I'm running a mini painting stream, 12.30 p.m. this Saturday on Muses underscore Touch on Twitch. So, everybody, I think that's it. Is there anything else I missed? All right, everybody, give Take away. Take us home, Carol. Okay. We got this. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you for watching. Shoot. Bye. Beat it. Get Bye. out of here.